everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my top 20 favorite characters from the Star Wars franchise. Um, I'm going to do this list in two parts. Um, I'll probably do part two maybe tomorrow and everything, because I don't really have time to do them all at one time and everything before I go to work. So, um, I'll start with uh, 20 through 11 today, and then I'll do 10 through 1 tomorrow. So, starting out at number 20 is... Noah from Ewoks uh, Battle of Endor. Um, he was a really likable character and everything. Wilfred Brimley plays him and he does a very good job and everything. I really liked his performance in this movie. He, At first he starts out as like this grouchy hermit type character that doesn't want anything to do with uh, uh, Sindel and uh, uh, Wicket and everything. He uh, just wants to live by himself and everything until he can get ready to leave Endor. And he ends up getting swept up in the, the adventure with them and growing really attached to Sindel and Wicket. And he's just a really, really likable character. Um, and I think that Wilford Brimley is great as him and everything. So Noah is number 20, and number 19 is the kid. From the Mandalorian, um, he also he's everyone calls him Baby Yoda because he's the same species as Yoda, um, but he's nobody knows what his name is or anything. So uh, in the show they call him the Kid, so that's what I'm gonna call him. Um, I think he's just absolutely adorable and everything. I, like everybody else, almost everybody else I know, um, he just is so cute and he does pretty much anything he does uh it just makes you go oh he's just such a cute little guy and my favorite stuff is when he's getting into stuff on the ship he always cracks me up when he does that because it reminds me of my nephew when he was when he was really little and everything he, he um and everything. You know, I've known kids that have been like him. I mean, he, he likes to press buttons and stuff like that. He's just really adorable. Um, so, the kid is number 19, and number 18 is Din Jarden, um, also known as the Mandalorian, or as I like to call him Bando, because that's kind of what, like his nickname in the show. Um, I really like him. He's a very, very cool character. He kicks butt a lot and everything. I like the girl that's in the show, too. I forgot her name, uh, but I really like her, too. Yeah. Um, but I think Mando is awesome. I, when I, the show first was announced, I was like, I don't really know that this is going to be that interesting to me because I never really thought the Bounty Hunter stuff was really all that interesting and everything. I've been pleasantly surprised with the show. I absolutely love it. And uh, Mando is a really awesome character. Pa uh, Pedro Pascal does a really great job playing him, and I can't wait for season two and everything. He he instantly became one of my favorite characters after just the first episode of this show and everything. He's just totally awesome. Now, I like that he kicks a lot of butt, but he also has a lot of heart and is easily swayed by the kid and everything. He, like, does everything in his power to protect him and everything. He's just a really cool character. So Mando is number 18 and number 17 is Darth Maul. Um, I absolutely love him. He's one of my favorite uh, villains of the Star Wars franchise. I absolutely just love him and the Phantom Menace. I remember when I was a kid he was one of the reasons I was so hyped for The Phantom Menace. I had all kinds of Darth Maul toys and pencils and uh, they would release like Pepsi and Mountain Dew cans that would have the characters and it took me forever to collect them all. I wish I still had them because I ended up losing them I guess. Um, but I never had opened them or anything and I had the Darth Maul. The Darth Maul one was one that took me forever to finally get. And I was so excited when I finally got it and everything. I don't know what ever happened to it, but um, I also had this really cool uh, candy thing that had Darth, like the uh, top half of Darth Maul's body and everything. And you press the button and 
he would his lightsaber would move and stuff. I also had one of Qui Gon and everything. I used to love those things, and I uh, I remember when my birthday that year I bought a toy of Darth Maul, and I was just so ecstatic to have one of him. He's always just been one of those villains I thought was really cool. He doesn't really do much in the Phantom Menace and everything, but he has been expanded in the main episodes of the Clone Wars that I actually have seen are the ones that he was on and everything, and I loved getting to see him in Solo, and I can't wait till this Darth Maul TV show comes out on Disney Plus, if it's really true. I don't know 100% that it's actually happening, but if it does, I can't wait to see it. Um, so, Darth Maul is number 17, and number 16 is... Ahsoka Tana, or Ahsoka Tano. Um, I really like her too. She was introduced in the Clone Wars. Um, and I really liked her from the get-go. I thought she was really kind of a cool character. She, she, uh, always got her and Anakin in trouble in the movie, but I still really liked her. And I, I liked that she could see something cute and stuff inside the of Jabba's baby because personally I thought the little guy was ugly as hell but uh, she she just has a really likable personality and everything I haven't seen a lot of her yet except for the some of the episodes of Rebels that she was on and I've seen a few episodes of the show and then the Clone Wars movie I can't wait to watch more of them and get to know the character a lot more because I love what I've seen so far and I've heard that she might be uh, in a Disney Plus thing or a, a movie or something um, played by Brie Larson. I think that'd be an awesome pick. But I also think Rosario Dawson would be a great pick too. Um, but I love Ahsoka and everything. She's a really awesome character. So she's number 16. And number 15 is Finn. Um, I really liked him from the get-go. Uh, he was a really cool character. I love that he left the the first order and everything he stopped being a stormtrooper and everybody was calling him a traitor that ran into him and everything he was just a really cool character though I, I really liked him and everything in the force awakens I, he was not really used very well in the last jedi um i do agree with people on that that i i didn't care for as much as they did with him but he was still good enough in it um, and then in Rise of Skywalker, I thought he was really cool and everything. There were a lot of things, though, that I wish they would have done with him that they didn't do, like stuff that they had set up but never really went anywhere with. Um, I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to spoil it, but uh, I, I really do like Finn. And I'd actually like to see maybe a spinoff series or something with him. Uh, I doubt it'll ever happen. I think that John Boyega has even said that he doesn't expect to be playing Finn ever again. But then again, Mark Hamill said the same thing after he uh, finished Return of the Jedi. So, I mean, who knows? But uh, I really like Finn, so uh, he's number 15. And number 14 is Padme. Um, I really do like Padme. I think she's a pretty good character, pretty underrated. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like her, and they say that Natalie Portman was bad as, as her and stuff. But really... I don't think that Natalie Portman's acting was that bad and everything. I really did like Padme. Um, the stuff that did really seem bad on her acting and cringy and stuff was more the dialogue. And it was more because of the way the dialogue was written, not really the actress and everything. I thought she was pretty good in the Star Wars movies. And I would have loved to get to see her return somehow if they ever like did some kind of show or something where her character could have been alive or whatever. I would have loved to see her return and everything. Um, so Padme is number 14 and number 13 is C-3PO. Um, I really like him a lot. He, especially in the original trilogy and I love like in, uh, Empire when he keeps on blocking Han and Leia from kissing and he kind of, uh, just gets on Han's nerves and everything. I love that. And everything, and I love like in the Return of the Jedi, he, um, the Ewoks are worshiping him and stuff, and everything. He just is really likable. Although in A New Hope, I kind of didn't like him at first, like the way he was rude to R2D2 and stuff. But 
um, as the movie progressed and stuff, I really did like him. And everything is in the original trilogy. In the prequels, he was okay. He was barely in The Phantom Menace, and he was big comic relief in Attack of the Clones, but it didn't really bother me too bad. Um, but he just, like, wasn't one of the standout things for me in Attack of the Clones. And he didn't hardly do anything in uh, Revenge of the Sith. Um, and in the sequel trilogy, I feel he was really underused, especially in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. He didn't really have anything to do in those, but Rise of Skywalker gives him a really cool arc and made me remember why I loved him so much in the original trilogy and everything. I think it was the best we stuff we had gotten from C-3PO since uh, Return of the Jedi and everything. So he's number 13, and number 12 is... R2-D2. Um, for the longest time, I would say 3PO was my favorite uh, Star Wars droid character and everything, but uh, the more and more I think about it, I really like R2, because uh, especially in the original trilogy and prequel trilogy, I mean, he was always saving pe everybody's butt and everything. He went with Luke on all of his big journeys and everything, and he was just a really, really awesome character, I, and very likable and everything. I grown to like him even more as an adult than I did when I was a kid. Because um, when I was a kid, I thought the droids were cool, but they weren't like the main things that really entertained me. Yeah, I really like him a lot more now. Um, and how I like, like in the prequels, we get to see him fly and do all kinds of stuff and everything. I know a lot of people, one of their big complaints about the sequel trilogy is R2 doesn't get enough screen time. In the Force Awakens, he didn't really do anything because he was shut himself down and everything and then uh and Rise of Skywalker he was just pretty much on the I mean Last Jedi he was pretty much on the ship and in Rise of Skywalker he didn't do a whole lot but you gotta remember also um he experienced the traumatic events and stuff that Luke did when Kylo Ren turned to the dark side he he's been through so much in the last uh two trilogies and everything that and he's he's an old droid i mean maybe the reason why he, they didn't make him do as much is because of how old he is and everything people don't seem to realize that he, he was around before episode one started because i mean we first meet him when he's in action and everything so uh who knows how long he was around before that he, he's a really old droid so maybe that's why he didn't do as much maybe that they, they're like you know maybe he's tired and everything just didn't have enough fight in him or something, but I, I absolutely love R2-D2, and also if it wasn't for him, Luke wouldn't have at least uh, started training Rey and helping the Resistance like he did in The Last Jedi, but I, I really do love R2-D2, and he's number 12, and number 11 is Chewie, um, or Chewbacca. Um, I, I've always loved him. Um, I think he was always one of my favorite characters and everything as a kid. Uh, I always thought he was really cool. And the sound effects they used to make his, his roaring noises and stuff is awesome. Some of the best. And I think he's is, is just a really, really good character. Um, I like that he kind of gets more to do in uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Once again, like C-3PO and R2-D2, his roles in the sequel trilogy is not as big. Uh, um, he was in The Force Awakens quite a bit, though, and the stuff with uh, Han and everything, like the scene when Han dies and he lets out that loud cry, it's just heartbreaking and everything. And I loved getting to see uh, the origins of how him and Han met in The Last Jedi. Um, I mean, uh, Solo um, and everything. and Getting to see how their friendship began and stuff, and then going back and watching Han's death just makes it even more heartbreaking. And... There's a particular scene in The Rise of Skywalker that is just absolutely heartbreaking with Chewie. Um, he doesn't die. That's not not what it is. It just it it's very sad scene. I, I probably shouldn't have said he didn't die because that kind of spoils it if you haven't seen it. So I apologize. Um, but yeah, so Chewie is number eleven. Um, so that's my uh, numbers twenty through eleven on. My favorite Star Wars characters. Um, I'll do 10 through 1 tomorrow at some point. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoy this video, everybody. Thank you, and have a good day.